بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يتلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أوصيكم وإياي أولا بتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته On the brother and sister, alhamdulillah, we are able to be together again tonight to discuss about the ayah that we have discussed last night. It's about Surah Al-Fatiha. A surah that every one of us have been reciting thousands of times. May Allah Rabbul Alameen accept our prayer. We have been asking Allah to guide us. But before that, you remember that our Prophet Sallallahu left us to recite the Fatiha, walk off, stop in every ayah, so that Allah will respond to us. It's a two-way communication, so we hope that you have the right adab when you are performing your prayer, whether it's a Farudu prayer or Sunnah prayer. One thing the Prophet never miss a dua iftita, okay? Then Ta'awuzu and Bismillah and Al-Fatiha. If a person don't memorize any surah other than Fatiha, Alhamdulillah. But if they do memorize, they should try their best to recite the other surah. Like how the Prophet Wasallam have shown us. Now, when the Prophet recite Fatiha again, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Waqaf. Allah answer Hamidani Abdi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim We stop Allah will answer Asna alayya Abdi And we continue Malik Yawmiddin Allah will answer Majjadani Abdi Then only we continue by saying Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Then Allah will say Haza bayni wa bayna abdi wa li abdi ma sa'a. Allahu Akbar. When you come to the fourth ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us now. Now it's between we and Allah directly. No more hijab. It's a direct connection. It's like a direct line with Allah Rabbul Alamin. There is the beauty of when the Muslims were taught to perform their prayer, they are not supposed to call other than Allah direct. That is how we are so unique that Allah is open up Himself to us. We can talk to the King of all kings directly without any intermediate. We are other people when they want to communicate with God, they have to go through a, a intermediate. They have to have some partner. They commit some shirk. We cannot do that. Iya kana budu, wa iya kana sta'in. And look at this adab, beautiful adab from Surah Al-Fatiha. To you only, Allah, we worship, and to you only we ask for help. Anything we want, we ask to you. Yeah, if you want anything, you must do what you have to do first. Worship Allah first. Don't just keep on asking, asking, and asking what whatever Allah wants us to do. We are not doing it. Just like if you want a salary, you work first. Then you will get your salary. That's how we go. This is the adapt. This is the manners. You want something, you are prepared to give something. So Allah said, And this is time Allah said, Now it's between me and my servant. And whatever he asks me, I will give it to him. Allah promised, he will give it to us. 
as long as we are sincere in asking Allah what we are asking and we are committed with what we ask and we have patience. Sabar. Because when Allah wants to respond to our prayer, we need His guidance. So He will show you His guidance. To be guided by Allah, we just have to follow what Allah has shown us. He called us to follow His Messenger, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, Because He is the way. And then, there are times Allah also allows us to follow the righteous people. That's why we say, Ihdina sirat mustaqim. This is what we ask Allah. So Allah show us His way. We all have been shown the way of Allah. There's nothing to say. I'm still waiting for the hidayah. What is he waiting for hidayah? The hidayah was given to all of us. Quran is the hidayah. Huda linnas. Is in our hand. Every one of us have a copy of the Quran. The only thing that we don't read, we read without understanding. We understand we do not implement what Allah wants us to do. It's like you ask somebody for a guidance, the people show you, but you don't follow. Then who to be blamed? What kind of guidance we are asking Allah? The same guidance that Allah has given to those before us. The Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, started from the four caliph of our Prophet, who was guaranteed by our Prophet, that Allah had granted them Jannah. Abu Bakr, Jannah. Umar, Jannah. Osman, Jannah. Ali, Jannah and so on. Allah. This is to remind these are the people of Jannah. If we want to go to Jannah, we just have to follow Sabikun Wal Awalu Minal Muhajirin Wal Ansar. Why? Because these are the group of people Radiallahu Anhum Waradu An. The people who always please Allah, whatever they want to do, they don't think about what people will say about them. They are not worried about what people say. Not like us. Our iman is so weak. Before we want to do something, what my, my, my friend will say, what my family will say, what my neighbor will say. You see, our fear towards people is more than the fear towards Allah. And it's like that we owe them everything. Where Allah is the owner of all of us. We should please Him first. That's where Allah said, this group of people are those who please Allah. Radiallahu anhum wa an. And because they please Allah, Allah is so happy and Allah is so pleased with them. Sirat al an'amta alayhim. Allah gave it to us. He shows, it's written in a book of the life history, the bi- yeah, biography of Abu Bakr. You just read, see what kind of man is Abu Bakr. What made him so great that the Prophet even said that if you put, if there's a scale and you put Abu Bakr's iman on the right and the iman of all other Muslims on the left, the iman of Abu Bakr is more heavier. That scale is heavier. Why? And why he was given the title as Siddiq? Because whatever the Prophet said, he will have no doubts at all. Samitna wa I hear and I obey. That's how. No doubts. Finish. Remember the history of Isra and Mi'raj? Abu Lahab, the enemy of a Prophet, was so happy you heard that the Prophet is telling that he have left Makkah to Medina, Medina, Palestine, Palestine. He may rush yeah, to the heaven. And he met Allah the same night he was back in Makkah. For Abu Lahab, this is a good news. 
this is the greatest opportunity, the best opportunity to attack him and say, this man Muhammad is majnoon, crazy. How can he claim that he traveled last night? Just one night, he traveled all the way Mecca to Medina, Medina to Palestine and up to the heaven and back on the same night. It never made sense at all. But there's nothing to do with human. This is Allah's will. Allah said, Kun, Fayakun. That's all. If Allah wants to do anything, anything can happen. But when they ask Abu Bakr, do you believe what this man is saying? Abu Bakr said, is this from Prophet Muhammad Wasallam? Yes. This man Muhammad that you believe, you follow. More than that, I will believe. Allahu Akbar. But we Muslims are so naive today. When people quote the saying of the Prophet, Kala Rasulullah, we just don't bother. We don't feel at all. We feel that, ah, oh, my feeling is better. I have a better understanding. Or I ask, what the scholar's opinion? Are we saying that the scholar know better about Islam than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And that's why we keep on reading the biography also of Abu Bakr. Biography of Omar, Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine Omar? That the Prophet al Faruq. He is a man of no nonsense. No, he is a very straightforward man. He means business. Abu Bakr is softer, but not Omar. To the extent that the Prophet said, wherever Omar walked, every road, every lane that he passed, all the shaitan, the devil will run away. Because he's a man of no nonsense. Black is black, white is white. Allahu Akbar. And he was once the enemy of the Prophet. And Allah gave him hidayah. Look at this man. Osman, Ali and all other companions. That's why we say, Sirat al an'am ta'alayhim. The one that you have bestowed your yeah, blessing, O oh Allah, yeah, upon the people before us. Not the people after us, the people before us who have passed away no more with us in this life. But they will be with us in Akhirah with the will of Allah if we follow them. If we don't follow them, we have no right to be with them. That's why Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ bi'ihsan." We should follow them. But Allah calls us to follow them. You want to follow? Follow them. Not just follow anybody you like. Then we say to Allah. And Allah said, this is what you ask, I show you. And that's why there's so many yeah, things that happened in the time of the Prophet to all the companions. Just follow. The Prophet even said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al al-rashidin al-mahdimin ba'di. The Prophet also remain. And the Prophet knows what's going to happen to all of us. He don't live in our time, but Allah gave him the vision. And he said, Man ya'ish min kum ba'di fasayara fasayara ikhtilafan qasira. Whoever survived after me, you are sure to see by your own eye, to experience by yourself that my ummah is going to be divided very, very yeah, wide. They are going to be divided. Ikhtilafan kathira. When that happened, they said, I follow this, I follow that, I follow east, I follow west. Who call you to do that? Allah just follow his way, follow his messenger and the righteous companion. Then the Prophet said, Alaikum bi sunnati. When there is so much confusion, dispute, and the Ummah is so divided. For you and me, lay person, don't know who to follow. Of course. People who don't have the right knowledge and understanding, they don't know who to follow. Are you telling that we are better than the great four Imam? No. Are you telling me the great Imam is better than the Tabi'in? Are you telling me the Tabi'in is greater than 
the tabi tabi no no the prophet's companion no are you telling the companion is better than prophet Muhammad? no all the four great imams said follow the sunnah follow the prophet none of them call anybody to follow them and you want to follow them no problem but never any of them allow you to follow them blindly. When you follow people blindly, what do we say in Surah Fatiha, the last ayah? غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا We still keep on asking Allah, oh, oh guide us, that how you are guide the early nation and save us from the people who earn your anger. غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ who are these people? These are the people, a group of people who know what is right and what is wrong. They know what is haq, truth, and what is false. وَلَا تَلْبِسُوا الْحَقْ بِالْبَاطِلْ وَتَأْتُمُ الْحَقْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Who are these group of people? They are the Bani Israel. They are the Yahud. Because these people, they know. It's not that they don't know. And that's why Allah is very angry with them. Because you know. And you purposely hide the truth. And you tell the people about what is not true. If we don't know, it's a different category. This you really know. But you have the self-interest. You have your own agenda to mislead the people. That's why you earn the anger of Allah. But then also we end the group Dalin. Dalin are the people who went astray. They were given the book and then the rabbi have made changes. They don't follow the original Injil anymore. For the follower that come later on, they are just like you and me, common people, with good feeling, good faith. I just follow. I don't know what is right and wrong, but what people say, what the priest say, what the father said, what the rabbi said, I just follow. If you follow the right people who guide you with the guidance of the Torah, guide you with the guidance of the Injil, the Bible, Alhamdulillah, but now, they are putting their own words, their own feeling. To the extent now they want you to worship them more than others. They become the medium. Yeah, that's what happened. Darlene, Darlene are those who have turned astray. And the Mahdubi are those who receive the anger because they know. We know what happened in the time of Moses. Moses have saved them from Pharaoh and want to bring them back to the land. We call Jerusalem today. Just for a while, the Moses left them to receive the Torah. They start to worship the cow. They become cow worshippers. Na'uzubillah. Did the cow help them? Did the cow guide them across the sea? No. It is Allah who sent Moses and Harun to go and save them. They have been a slave of Pharaoh for generations. After they gained the freedom, they are not thankful and grateful. And they even kill a lot of prophets. Na'uzubillah. So this is what we have been asking Allah. At the end of the prayer, al fatiha Amin, O oh Allah. Accept our prayer. We will keep on praying for all of you. And remember, Allah said in Surah Mu'minun, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ هم فيها خالدون 
And wow, beautiful who I am. The true believer are those who are kushot in their prayer. They pray with knowledge, understanding. They know the do and don't about prayer. They know what they are reciting. They know the way of the Prophet Wasallam, Not their way or anybody's way, but the way of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And that's why on and off normally, when the normal time, without the MCO, almost every month, we try our best to conduct one day course on perfecting my salah, my communication with Allah. There will be English and also be Malay. So we hope that all of you will try your best to look into our program when the MCO is lifted and thing is back to normal, then you all can join this special a day intensive course. How to develop a good relationship with Allah Almighty. Because through that then Wallazina hum ala salawatihim you have Allah said and those who take good care of their prayer, preserve it, knowing what is adab, what is rukun, what is tertib, what is tukmanina, what is wajibat and what is sunnah. You have all the knowledge. So that is can you make some mistake somewhere being human, then you know how to rectify, how to make sujud sahwi and so beautiful Islam show you all the ways you know, to overcome yeah, uh, your mistake and you know, how to rectify the error that you have done without any intention to do any mistake but being human we forget this we forget that then Allah sent the Prophet to show you how to solve it Allah when you have that knowledge and whoever performed the prayer properly, Hafizun, Allah said, Ula'ika humul waris. They are the inheritance of paradise, Ferudaus al A'la Allah. Brothers and sisters, we hope that while we are on the 13th Ramadan now, may Allah Rabbul Alameen yeah, accept all our fast. All our prayer can forgive all our sins. Small, big, minor, major, hidden, open sin. And the sin of all fellow Muslims, wherever they are. And also the sin of those who have passed away among us, our family, members. Wherever they are, whether they are in Sri Lanka, Palestine, India, Pakistan, China, Myanmar, who die yeah, because they are a Muslim and die with that in Allah Muhammad. May Allah put them among the righteous people and also all our good family members and friends who have passed away before all of us. And sooner or later, we are going to follow you. So may Allah meet all of us together. If we can see each other today the, in this dunya, we hope Allah will meet us in Akhirah. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen. We'll see you tomorrow night. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.